This transcontinental railroad. There was an undeniable energy in the air with the anticipation of all the new possibilities and challenges that lay ahead. Here at Promontory Summit on May 10th, 1869, was the most important day in the whole world for one glorious day. Imagine with me what it would have been like so many, many years ago to scan across this vast, uncharted landscape. is Promontory Summit, Utah, an unlikely spot for the culmination of an undertaking that will mark the ending of the Old West and the beginning of the new. But they have come, the famous and the unknown, the wealthy and the poor, the laborer and his boss, the Chinese from the West and the Irish from the East mingling with the local residents in a strange community. The gathering is both festive and anxious of waiting that moment of miracle when a common railroad spy, driven into an ordinary railroad tie, will link a continent. A gentle breeze is blowing under an almost cloudless sky. The thermometer on the shaded side of the Central Pacific telegraph car registers 69 degrees. Above the babble of voices can be heard the soft hissing of the steam locomotives, which herald the beginning of a new era. A polished tie of laurel wood has been placed in its ceremonial position by the construction superintendents of both railroads. And then Edgar Mills steps forward, a wealthy banker and friend of the Central Pacific Railroad officials, steps forward and signals for silence. And so a nation as well as the spectators gathered here away as the drama of men's hopes, prayers, and dreams began to unfold on this 10th day of May, 1869. And you are here. On behalf of the officials of both railroads, the Union Pacific and the Central Pacific, I bid you welcome! Hey! We are met today to commemorate the completion of a project, which is a remarkable example of the vision, the determination, and the labor of thousands of men in a union, which this day shall be consummated forever. We are assembled here to link the ends of the earth, to join the raw riches of the American West with the finished products of the Industrial East. We also met this day with mixed emotion, with joy that in a combined effort and a common cause, the brains, the sweat, and the muscle of thousands of men have joined together under the guidance of Almighty God. But it is with profound sorrow that we remember and pay homage to the hundreds of men who gave their lives that we might stand here at this moment and share one with another this sacred occasion. Among those whose presence we are honored to acknowledge at this time include a number of railroad officials from both lines, in addition to those taking part in the ceremony. We also take pride in the presence of the 21st Infantry Band. Coming forward to the country, we have got done praying. The spike is about to be presented. Thank you, Reverend Todd. At this time, it is my pleasure to introduce a fellow resident of Sacramento, 
Dr. H. W. Hartness, who will present two railroad spikes to Dr. Thomas C. Durant of the Union Pacific Railroad and Governor Leland Stanford of the Central Pacific Railroad. Dr. Durant and Governor Stanford will then place these spikes into holes that have already been drilled in the Laurelwood tie. But these are not ordinary spikes. Ladies and gentlemen, these are golden spikes made from pure California gold. Dr. Hartman. Gentlemen of the Pacific Railroad, and those of you who have met with us, a last spike needed to unite the Atlantic and the Pacific by a new line of trade and commerce is about to be driven to its place. If you perform this act, the East and the West have come together. Never since history commenced her record of human events has man been called upon to meet the completion of a work so magnificent in contemplation and so marvelous in execution. California, within whose borders and by whose citizens the Pacific Railroad was inaugurated, desires to express her appreciation of the vast importance to her and her sister states of the great enterprise which by joint action is about to be consummated. From her mines of gold has been forged a spike. From her laurel woods has been unitized. And by the hands of her citizens, she offers them to become part of this great highway, which is about to unite her in closer fellowship with her sisters of the Atlantic. From her bosom was taken the first soil. Let hers be the last tie and the last spike. And with them, accept the hopes and wishes of her people that the success of your enterprise will not stop short of its brightest promise. This spike was donated, donated by Mr. Frank Marriott, publisher of the San Francisco Newsletter. And in conclusion, I should like to draw your attention to this spike, the gift of David Hughes of San Francisco. On its head is inscribed, the last spike. On three sides, the names of railroad officials, and on the fourth side, this sentence. May God continue the unity of our country as this railroad unites the two great oceans of the world. Dr. pleasure to introduce Mr. F.A. Tritel, a United States Railroad Commissioner and candidate for governor of the great state of Nevada. He will present a spike of pure silver from the famed Comstock Road on behalf of the people of Nevada. Mr. Tritel. Thank you, Mr. Mills. To the iron of the east and the gold of the west, Nevada adds her link of silver to span the continent and wed the ocean. We are highly honored today with the presence of the Honorable Anson P.K. Safford, who is en route to Arizona as the newly appointed territorial governor. He was kind enough to delay his journey in order to make a presentation on behalf of the Arizona Territory. Governor Safford. Lived with iron, clad in silver, and crowned with gold, Arizona presents her offering that has banded the continent and directed the pathway to commerce. <laughs> Thank you. 
And now, friends, it is not only my duty, but my honor and privilege to introduce a man of vision, a man of courage, a humanitarian, and one who is highly esteemed by those of us who call him our friend. He is a Californian whose far-sightedness has contributed in large measure to the success of this great enterprise. Ladies and gentlemen, the president of the Central Pacific Railroad, Governor Leland Stanford. Gentlemen, the Pacific Railroad Companies accept with pride and satisfaction these gold and silver tokens of your appreciation of the importance of our enterprise to the material interests of the whole country, north, south, east, and west. These gifts shall receive a fitting place in the superstructure of our road. But before driving the last bike in the completion of the Pacific Railroad, allow me to express the hope that the great importance which you are pleased to attach to our undertaking may be in every respect fully realized. This line of rails connecting Atlantic and Pacific and affording to commerce a new transit will prove, we trust, a speedy forerunner of increased facilities. The day is not far distant when three tracks shall be found necessary to accommodate the commerce and travel which shall seek transit across this continent. Friends will be moving in one way on each track, granting the demands of cheapness and time. In conclusion, I might add, we hope to do ultimately that which is now impossible on long lines, transport costs, heavy and cheap products at living rates to the trade. Thank you. Thank you, Governor Stanford, for your astute and timely remarks. We regret that Dr. Durant is suffering from a severe headache and has temporarily retired to his quarters. In his absence and in the absence of the President of the Union Pacific Railroad, Mr. Oliver Ames, we have asked General Grenville Dodge, Chief Engineer, to represent his railroad with a few remarks. Mr. Mills, thank you. Gentlemen, the great Senator from Missouri, Thomas Hart Benton, proposes someday a giant statue of Columbus should be erected on the highest peak of the Rocky Mountains, pointing westward, denoting this as the great route across our continent. Today, you have made that prophecy a fact. This is the way to India! Thank you, General Dodge. Ladies and gentlemen, that moment for which you and the entire nation have been waiting. The driving of the last spike is at hand. At this time, we wish to commend both railroad companies and their workers for their efficiency and hard work in bringing this monumental undertaking to its successful fruition in a record six and one half years instead of the 12 years allotted to the venture. A final presentation will be made in the form of a silver-plated spike ball by Mr. L. W. Coe, president of the Pacific Union Express Company, after which Governor Stanford and Dr. Durant will make a few ceremonial taps on the precious metal spikes with them all. Mr. Cole. Thank you. Railroad officials, honored guests and friends, it is the honor of the officers and workers of the Pacific Union Railroad Company to add their congratulations upon the completion of this modern day miracle. This silver plated spike mall is symbolic of our good wishes.
At this point, I should explain that the last spike is a regular iron railroad spike that can be driven with the mall. Both the spike and the mall have been wired to the transcontinental telegraph line so that people everywhere can hear the blows as the spike is driven. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the moment has arrived. Boston and New Orleans have wired that they are ready and waiting. Indeed, throughout the length and breadth of the country, people everywhere are waiting at every Western Union station. As Mr. Schilling gives the signal that the last spike is driven, a magnetic ball will fall in the dome of the national capital. In San Francisco, the fire alarm bell will ring. A volley of 200 rounds will be fired in salute at Fort Point. And in Philadelphia, the Liberty Bell will ring again. Promontory to the country, already now. Dr. Durant has adjusted the spike. The spike will soon be driven. The signal will be three dots for the commencement of the blows. All right, Governor. Oh, and he done. <laughs> 